one eternity later. Hello everyone, let's chat. So for the last three years, I've been working at Apple on the photos team and got to work with some really incredible people during my time there. Uh, their programming abilities are really top notch and you just learn so much by interacting with them, but also their personalities, uh, some really outstanding people in that regard that also work on that team. And uh, yeah, it'll be really, it's a, it's a team that I'll miss. But at the end of the day, uh, after three years of working there, I started to consider whether I wanted to branch out into learning something else, right? While you're at Apple, you're kind of constrained to publicly working on just what you're working on on your team. So the YouTube channel was obviously kind of off limits because you're seen as representing Apple and it's a lot easier for HR just to have a blanket statement that regardless of what you're saying, if you're, you know, just don't talk about Apple because if you talk about Apple, um, you're seen as representing them. And if you say something wrong, then yeah, it's just a lot easier to have a policy that says you just can't do anything Apple related. So uh, that was unfortunate and it just leads me to want to create different content that is somewhat Apple related. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the ideas that I have for the channel going forward. But yeah, had a great time while I was there, but uh, I have some ideas. So let's talk about them. I have a new job that permits me to create content once again, and that's what I'd like to start doing. Now, if I look back on the history of this channel a little bit, we started back in 2010, and my goal at the time was to learn how to make a Mac application. So for that, I started with C, learning Objective-C on that, and then learned AppKit to kind of create the package. And the tutorials were structured that way, where I had essentially learned a little bit of C, and as I was learning, I would make a tutorial on it, one to two months later, and that just helped me internalize a lot of the concepts while I was trying to do it. So the, the, a lot of the motivation for creating these tutorials was just that I was learning it personally myself, and I figured while I'm learning it myself, I may as well also kind of just share this with everyone else because there wasn't a lot of content at the time for doing AppKit tutorials or Mac programming in general, and that was kind of one motivation. The other motivation was just so that I could internalize a lot of the concepts, right? If I could explain it to somebody else and it did a good job, then I probably internalized it in a way that just made me a better programmer. So that was kind of the motivation for the channel at the time. Now, things have changed in the three years that I've been gone and uh, pretty significantly. So where AppKit used to be the only way that you could really create, uh, well, for, at least from Apple, it was the only way that you could create user interfaces for the Mac. Um, there's two new projects now that Apple came out with officially at WWC 2019, which was Project Catalyst and Swift UI. Now, Project Catalyst is essentially a way to take UI kit code from your iOS slash iPad applications and convert those into a Mac application. And this is probably gonna be great. I, I think the success here will be that you will get a lot of iOS applications coming to the Mac. And, um, you know, whether they look as good as AppKit applications used to look, I, I don't really know what the outcome will be there, but uh, I'm not too concerned about that. I guess my point just was being that that is one new technology that we have is to create UI kit code and run that on the Mac. Now, uh, I don't know how interested I am necessarily in doing tutorials on this, just simply because it's already UI kit. There's tons of UI kit tutorials on this and it just doesn't interest me to do UI kit tutorials just from the sheer number of them that exist out there already. Now, if there's a specific subset of topics that are of interest to people, like how to do Mac specific things with Project Catalyst, then maybe there is a opportunity there to do a few tutorials, but I, I don't know how um, much I'm really gonna dedicate to that. The other framework is SwiftUI, which is the new Swift-based uh, declarative, uh, declarative framework for making UI. So this framework works across all of Apple's uh, platforms, which I think is probably gonna be a, a main uh, drawing point for it, is that you can make uh, one piece of code that runs on your Mac, your iOS, your tvOS, and even your watchOS devices, 
And so that'll be probably the way most developers going forward will try and create their user interfaces. Now, this is also, I think, going to blow up pretty fast. And I, what I mean by that is just that so many tutorials are going to come out around Swift UI that I also don't know if there's a niche here that I really am I'm aiming to solve with doing Swift UI tutorials. So kind of have to see. Um, I, I think the logistics of it will be that, you know, if I am to do a series on that, I want to focus on uh, some of the basic concepts, but then also some of the more complex concepts as well, explaining maybe some things in detail there. But that's um, that's kind of where I am with the frameworks for user interfaces. Now, in one way that I like to pivot this channel, I think I'd like to come into some new topics that we didn't really discuss before. So one of them is in-depth debugging. So when you run into a problem on your your application, right, how can we... What, what tools do we have available to solve these? So whether it's performance related or memory related, uh, whether it's working in the debugger, um, there's, there's various ways that we can solve problems that we come across in our application. And I think I just wanna give light to some of these more obscure concepts or maybe complex concepts of solving these problems. So uh, that's one avenue that I like to potentially go down. Another one is around server-side Swift. Now, I, I really don't know much about server-side Swift. I'm, uh, this would almost be just a complete learning uh, opportunity for me to kind of go down that route of what does it take to, to build server-related things in Swift. And that's, that's definitely an avenue that I, I think could be interesting. I don't know if there's really that many great tutorials out there on doing server-side Swift. So in the obscure category, uh, server-side Swift might be something interesting there as well. Now, the last thing is around hardware. So we never really had any hardware components on this channel, but one thing that I'd like to maybe get into is making a hardware component, whether it be uh, Raspberry Pi or uh, other physical electronics that then potentially integrate with other systems, right? Whether it be your iOS device or whether it be a server, right? Different things that um, we could build that aren't actually maybe just specific to Apple. So there's some avenues or some interests that I have that are a little bit different than what they started with, but um, I'd like to hear from you guys on what really you'd like to hear. So if there's other topics that you can think of, or if there's something about one of the specific ones that I just mentioned, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I'm going to be maintaining some open source software. Some of it will be my tutorials or other small projects that I might work on. The other one is uh, an application called GitUp, which is a graphical user interface around Git. It has some cool things around the branches or commits. Uh, it can visualize a lot of those things, but it also has the ability to undo or redo operations just like you would in a text editor, which is uh, pretty cool in Git because not a lot of applications offer that kind of thing. But if you're interested in uh, checking that out or even contributing to the code, I will leave the link for that in the comment section or the description, I guess, below. But if you have other comments that you'd like to leave around the tutorials you'd like to see on this channel or any other content, please leave your comments in the comment section below and I'll see you in an upcoming video.